Okay, so welcome back to Old School Coding. This is the third and final, I hope, installment of this session for the night. So, yeah, about those bugs. You notice that in my C code, I've been very careful to write tests as I go and make sure things work. And while we did find a problem in the register increment instruction where it wasn't setting the Z flag properly, by and large, that's worked out well. Contrast that with the thousand lines of assembly code that I cranked out, uh, and the only feedback I was getting was whatever errors and warnings the assembler was giving me. And this is uh, an older assembler. Uh, I am not sure whether it is somebody's personal project or what, but it's, it works. It works. But it doesn't always give me... Uh, warnings that are as good as what GCC and Clang are capable of these days. So I didn't expect to have it be silent about code that was just wrong. So had a couple of bugs in my assembly code that I cranked out because of course I did. Uh, there was a place where I was comparing memory in the the mem check stuff. I wrote CMP A comma M. Let that sink in for a moment. The compare instruction on the 8080 takes a single operand, which is the source of the data to compare with the accumulator. So when I wrote CMP A comma M, the instruction emitted into the instruction stream was CMP A, which was always zero, always equal. Change that to compare M, and suddenly it works. The second thing was, down here, uh, I have since rewritten big section of ROM found. I was trying to print out the memory size, and things were a little weird. Um, I was trying to rotate the accumulator right by several bits, and I wrote RRC three and RRC two to do those shifts but the other way around. Well, RRC is a instruction on the 8080 that takes no operands and it shifts it right by one. So that didn't work, which is why we went from F8 to, uh, yeah, it's, it's why we wound up with weird values coming out for our memory once we got things going. And once I figured that out, I thought I would take some time and actually write a divide by 10. And since it's only 256, there were two ways I could do this that seemed right. One is just set up a frippin' table. <laughs> it was so tempting. 256 byte entry that just has one tenth the index in it. Yeah. But then I thought, well, let's do this the other way. And I wrote a little loop that just says, Subtract 10 from the accumulator over and over and over again. Count how many times you do it. And then when you get a carry, correct it. So you have the dividend and the, div and the, uh, the, and the remainder. And then print them. And as a side effect of this, when I correct the tens place back to its appropriate value, I can skip printing the tens place. So this now works. And that took a lot of debugging because I kept thinking that the problem had to be in my C code. It had to be that my ROM wasn't getting out of the way. It had to be that my RAM wasn't working. And in reality, it was just that the assembly code that I blatted out last night, a thousand lines of assembly code that I blatted out last night, had bugs. So, let us run it again. So we're starting to run. We see that as we come up, we are reporting the disk table because I want to keep track of that. And you notice that on the terminal, we have our output. It does say 62 kilobytes of memory detected. So I'm properly dividing by 10 and printing out both digits and yada, yada. So now if I say X, Y, Z, it's going to say command not recognized. And I've got some debug debugs in there. Uh, get line done calling dispatch and dispatch what the command is and done with Mectamon. I had a bug where if you just hit return, it was seeing a zero. 
there was also a bug in the actual search code, which again, I blotted it out last night. So here in dispatch, where we have the table, I wrote DBA do boot A. Well, that tries to pack the pointer do boot A, which is a word long into a single byte. And that does nobody any good because that, when you then load that word, it takes whatever the next byte is. So we get a, an address of CD something or other, which doesn't really do much good. I think it put us in an infinite loop somewhere. Anyway, so this is now working. C, D, E, F, loading backspace A will boot. Uh, I added a halt command H, which halts the simulation. And you'll see that it shut down the simulation and shut down the TTY connections. And we're done. So there we go. I don't think I'm going to do any more coding tonight. It's been a day. Uh, I had a bit of frustration there, and that always takes it out of me. So uh, I will commit this because it does contain a monitor. Uh, it contains two commands, one of which does something, another which says TBD. Uh, the next step will be uh, writing a command to boot from disk and starting to pull in some of our code. And we have a number of bits of code. Like I said, I've turned out about a thousand lines of code last night. Um, there's the ROM. Oh. Let's look at the listings instead. So we have the ROM listing here. We've already been working on this. And that's actually got information about all of our devices packed there at the top. Um, CPM has a get sys and put sys set of commands. The idea is that when you want to customize CPM, you start with a floppy disk that has CPM on it. And for CPM 2.2, that would be CPM relocated for a system with 20 kilobytes of RAM. The idea is you use get sys to pull it in, and then you do stuff to it and you use put sys to write it back out. And we have those, uh, that's basically stock from the manual. And I filled in sector read and sector write for, for the void star. There is a customized fourth that I've been working on. This is fig fourth 1.1, but I took all the places where it called into CPM and changed them to the right code to do the right thing for the void star. You see here we've got the void star disk interface. Uh, there's actually very little that needs to, oops, needs to change. I've actually written, uh, how can I make this wider for me? LST, uh, let's just look at it here. There we go. So all the void star customizations I've done, I'm setting off like this just to show that this is mostly unmodified from the fig fourth listings. So we modified set IO, which is the word that uh, stores what track and sector you're gonna work on. Uh, we modified set drive because that would store it and we just wanna blat it out to the, to the controller. And then we have the read and write. Read and write are really simple. Uh, because we have already set up the controller with the proper disk number, track number, and sector number, we can go ahead and just do it. So we set a counter and we move things around. We do have to pick up our, our DMA port, though. So the DMA address is over there in use. Yep. And for the serial ports, we're down here. Fourth has the idea of a console in and out, and it's got printer output, and I think that's it. And for exit, what I'm doing is I'm jumping to the ROM base to exit. So when we exit from fourth, it will branch back out to the ROM base. And currently I have assembled fig fourth at the wrong, for the wrong ROM base. Uh, yeah, I need to fix that real quick.
we have decided to only have one ROM module installed and to have four RAM modules installed. But this puts us at over range when we're computing RAM top. I wonder if I subtract one, does it work? Yeah, I can subtract one. So instead of RAM top, I'll call it RAM last. And that doesn't actually ever get used. I sure wanted to watch. Now, where we size memory EM needs to be sized properly. Currently, it's just set to 0C00. This really wants to be set to ROM base. Uh, no, fourth doesn't know that we've got weirdness here. So RAM KB is equal to 62. There we go. And ROM KB. So in a hypothetical system where we give ourselves 64K of RAM, we would have no way of getting back into the ROM. So there's RAM last and ROM base. Uh, RAM top is not correct. This is RAM, yeah, RAM top. Now let's look at the memory layout here and see if I didn't get it off by one. So at the very bottom of Fig4, they do this neat thing where they set up a bunch of symbols that aren't used anywhere. They're just there to show us. So we see where all these are signed. We see that the initial fourth dictionary goes all the way to 1B5D. And after that, our initialized memory. And it is indeed putting memory limit at F800. And this is the last byte of the last buffer. First buffer is going into a nicely lined address, so we're good. So that's the fourth image. We also have a CBIOS image, which is already configured for 62 kilobytes of memory. And I have two boot sectors. I have a boot sector for fourth. And I have a boot sector for CPM. And they only differ in a whole bunch of comments. And, of course, where we're going to put things. So, for instance, fig fourth starts at 100 and goes up through 1C. And CPM, we go to a computed address. Okay, so I'm not sure what's better to do on this, to give it to a tank for a CP set. So the boot sector on any given disk needs to oops, min mem size and oh, la, 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 hold on I did the wrong thing here boot CPM. There we go. So min mem size is sixty two. So this guy right here, uh, because CPM goes to a different place depending on memory size. The boot sector on any given disk has to have a bootloader that matches the expectations of the code it's loading. Okay. You have to be very careful about that. Anyway, so that's going to be our next step is working out how to put this stuff into the, the disk. So we need a way of saying... Uh, load the disk from this binary file or this hex file. And then we need to set up our boot code to say, please engage bdev to write the code. 
So boot CPM and boot fourth do the right thing, we hope. We have fourth, we have get sys and put sys. And all we are missing now is a image of a IBM single density diskette whose first two tracks contain CPM. And I think I have seen those kicking around. Um, given the copyright date on those would be 1979-ish, uh, that's going to be over 40 years ago. Um, first of all, I don't think it'll be in copyright. And second of all, I suspect that uh, if Gary was still alive, he'd probably let me have a copy of it. And if not, I am sure that I would be willing to pay digital research for a license to CPM 2.2. I am not sure if they still do that. You know what? I wonder. I wonder who owns digital research these days. Let me do a check on this. So I'm going to Google who owns CPM intellectual property. Okay, so Kildall and his company DRI sold CPM and subsequent operating systems and development tools into the 1990s. Uh, as of 2006, the current owners of the DRI licenses, including CPM, are DR DOS Inc. Okay. So we need to find out who is DR DOS. IT History Incorporated in 2002. And it was, okay, DR DOS originated digital research in 87, acquired by Novell in the early 90s. Aha, 96, it was acquired by Caldera, same company that sued and settled out of court with Microsoft over DOS related antitrust allegations. 98, it was spun out to Lineo, and in, and in 2002, it was acquired by a new company aptly called DRDOS, Inc. Company website, there it is, drdos.com. This site can't be reached. Their server's IP address couldn't be found. So, drdos.com appears to be a dead link. Interesting. So, internet way back machine. Let's see if there's any news about drdos.com. Uh, so let's see. It looks like they had some saves on this website back in 2020. Let me look at the last one, May 20, May 2nd. There is a snapshot of drdos.com. Error, play, page cannot be displayed. Please contact your web hosting. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, okay. Trying one other one. It says welcome drdos.com. Uh, it looks like this is just errors. Back to 2018. I'm getting nothing but a white screen out of archive.org. Let's go way back. Let's go back to a whole bunch of updates. Okay, so this is 2008. We've got, uh, in 2008, their website had a copyright date of 2004.
in 2013, the website looks pretty much the same and completely lacks a copyright date. Oh wait, no, there it is. It's still copyright 2004, but it's in the upper right-hand side of the screen. So, wow. Um, 2016. DR DOS, embedded DOS, all things DR DOS, has suddenly turned into a chat area where there's one comment that says one response to home. This is a test comment. Looks like somebody bought the domain. I scan forward and the test comment goes away. And in 2017, it gets redirected to what looks like a, it's either a personal site or a spam center site. So I'm thinking that DRDOS, uh, DRDOS Inc. no longer exists. So IT History Society, does it say anything at all there? No. Um, So a year ago, there's a posting on hackster.io from Brian Sparks, president of DRDOS and current owner of the rights to the CPM operating system. Can you, can you be, no, uh, he's made a welcome clarification of the CPM license, making sure it's clear that everyone at all has rights to distribute it, modified or otherwise. Oh. We got a uh, sun coming up and need a tank to pick it up. Brian Sparks may be my sudden new hero. Thanks, Lovelace. Okay. So if I can confirm this, then it should be easy enough to get a hold of a CPM 2.2 disk. Uh huh. Digital research. That was my bad. Device Logics Inc. was founded by Brian by Brian Sparks with the advancement of DOS. So it sounds like the same guy. Did he resurrect the digital research logos? <sighs> oh my goodness. DRDOS.org. Can reset this one, guys? Device Logics acquired DRDOS from the Canopy Group and has plans to release in spring 2003. Okay. So... Digitalresearch.biz is apparently an ancient website. DRDOS.org exists, does not have an HTTPS entry. Uh, looks like a lot of DRDOS wiki. Okay. I will paw around in there and see if I can find stuff. But let's see, CPM. Yep. Okay. CPM license release update on Google Groups. Uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff back in July of 2022. A lot of um, 
a lot of public of publications on what's going on with licensing of DR DOS and CPM. Uh, yeah, there'll be no point in cleansing after a Hakar has been in <laughs> I would love to find out what's going on. I should have kept my finger on this. This is this is not something that I should have let go. I have always looked up to CPM as an operating system. Um, even throughout all the years I was at Sun and Silicon Graphics. Anyway. For a different time. I'm going to call it a, a stream. Uh, if you stuck around and helped me ponder the realities of the CPM licensing as I pawed around off screen, uh, good on you. Otherwise, yeah, if people skipped on, that's okay too. So I will see you next time. So as always, you know, keep it small, keep it safe, keep it fast, and keep